So hi, everybody. Um, I'm here with Gabriele Zuda um, to talk today about global leadership and some of the specific challenges that global leaders face, maybe particular in this time, but also, of course, the, uh, the characteristics and traits that global leaders may need to bring to the table to be uh, efficient and good global leaders. So, and Gabriele will probably define for us what that means. <laughs> So Gabriele is an expert and a business, a business advisor. She specifically focuses on international management and on global leadership um, and has had uh, a range of clients, um, both in her corporate consulting work and then also, of course, uh, has had a lot of university affiliations, both in, in Europe and here in Australia. Um, she's previously been a professor at the University of Melbourne and is currently um, also employed by uh, RMIT. Um, and so she has a lot of experience both on the research side in terms of global leadership, but very much also on the practical side. And will be able to tell us a lot about what it takes to be a great global leader. Well, but that puts you in, in a great spot to tell us about, you know, what global leaders, leaders need to bring to the table. So kind of, you know, what characteristics do they have? Uh, what, you know, skills do they need to bring? So you know, that's, of course, interesting to our students who may want to become global leaders. You know, what do they have to pick up on the way? Who do they need to become to be great leaders in a global country? Yeah, yeah. yeah. And that's a great question. Look, that's um, I'm obviously a great believer in education and education can be having all sorts of forms and shapes. It might be formal education. It might be informal education. So I've come across a lot of leaders, for example, so just, just talking about the CEOs that I've most recently worked with, many of them really coming out of the world's best universities, um, uh, which obviously includes Melbourne University and, and, and the group of eight universities across Australia, but Ivy League or, you know, or Oxford, Cambridge, et cetera, et cetera. Um, we, 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 know, um, we know them all. But um, there have also there are also leaders who don't have that type of formal um, ed education and are more on the self-made and learning by doing type of path. Um, they will often constitute their learning path with, for example, micro credentials or shorter shorter type of um, say MBA or what have you other components that are formal. But um, it seems to be really that mix of learning about where it's important to have the theory and the conceptual frameworks in mind because there's no point in reinventing the wheel when it's been invented already and you can you know con you know you can add on the knowledge that others have acquired already mm -hmm. and and make that you know shape that in in the way in which you want to shape it and where it takes you in your career path but then um it's also really important that you have that own thing going on. You have your own path. You have your experiences and you learn from those experiences. And I, I spoke earlier about the purpose-driven motivation. Um, and we all need to get there at some moment in time. What do you want to do with the knowledge that you acquire, no matter which way you acquire it? And how does it actually fit a certain context? And because this class is in this cross-cultural, you know, ha has that cross-cultural and cross-border dimension, it's not one size fits all. Yeah. And it's not, you know, in each culture, your leadership skills are going to apply in the same way. So obviously intelligence in all sorts of ways, there's the emotional intelligence as well, which is yeah. extremely, extremely important because you can manage things in people, but can you lead them? Yeah. And if you don't have the emotional intelligence, you won't be a leader necessarily who's suitable to a given context, mm -hmm. such as we have now yeah. with COVID-19. There are certain leadership skills that are just a bit different from the traditional, maybe more authoritative or laissez-faire if you take the two dimensions type of leadership, but there are more, not only democratic, but really involved people that are really, you know, that, that are sort of servant leadership. Yeah. So yeah. that's that's important that you can actually align. And I think that's part of the key for successful 
international leader mm -hmm. to have that capability of adapting not only to culture but also to context. Yeah, yeah. Well, and it kind of, I guess it, it gels with something that I always think about as well, as you just said, you know, you need to find your own path and you need to, you know, mm -hmm. hear to some degree about a, like an issue, yeah. right? You need to bring something. And for me, that's always yeah. passion, right? I mean, I mean, every great leader for me needs to have a passion for something. Um, and yeah. especially in a cross-cultural yeah. context, because, you know, I talk to my students a lot about the kind of challenges, of course, that this context can bring. Like you just said, you know, you, you have to be much yeah. more flexible. You have to really kind of work with different people. With We have vastly different approaches to how they want to get their work done. Uh, but to some degree, it needs to be worth it, right? So you have to have a passion for that as well, yeah. so that it yeah. doesn't become a chore. It's actually something that you enjoy doing. Yeah, and as a leader, you're also a problem solver. You're there to listen to people. You're there to, because they, they're coming to you to find a solution. And so you're actually, you need to bring solutions to the products, to the markets, to the clients, but also to your own people. Yeah. That's right. That's I a think, really good point. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And then also, what what do you actually want to achieve as a as a leader? What's what's why do you get to become a leader in an organization? Is it because you want to have the organization thrive? Probably. <laughs> but how do you actually want to do that? What's your mindset about this? Is it um, is it by m making the stakeholders, the people? in it and around it thrive? Or is it purely um, a return on investment or a KPI type of, uh, you know, keep performance indicator driven uh, view on sales, on growth, or, you know? Yeah. That's, that's obviously a discussion that just go, also goes into that direction of shareholder versus stakeholder or with stakeholder thinking. Yeah. Who am I? leading and what am i leading for yeah that's right mm. yeah. now did, did you did you think that basically um the 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 situation that we're currently in in the world does that put specific additional requirements on on leaders to perform well at this time and and also of course to lead their people well at this time yeah yeah absolutely yes this is a big yes <laughs> or a capital letter yes <laughs> absolutely um I've had, um, yeah, I've had a lot of interactions with with leaders, in particular CEOs, and 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 you know also also in, in other types of organizations, uh, leaders who some more naturally picked up that adaptation to COVID in particular, um, some less naturally, and had to make efforts, but all struggling with the same challenges and issues probably with it so common denominator is um well at the beginning there was a lot of worry about productivity mm -hmm. and then and then pretty quickly leaders realized that depending on how they lead <laughs> uh productivity can, get, can go, go absolutely out of the roof and productivity can be at you know 100 <laughs> percent and just, you know, just keep growing and growing and growing. But how about the growth of your client engagement, your market, your business development, all of these things? And how, how do you engage? So, so much around communications, people and culture, you know, oh, that's the big, big things. Um, a lot of around, of course, technology access and how do you actually use that <laughs> um, how much cash flow do you have to make that possible so that engagement can be based on the way in which we interact like this mm -hmm. um, somewhat through the screen and how efficient and effective that is because you know obviously if wi-fi doesn't work then hmm. <laughs> you can try to communicate as good as, as, as you want if it doesn't isn't received on the other side that's a different one but it's just um yeah, getting people together, although they are distant, mm -hmm. requires more communication, clearer communication, and a lot more empathy and compassion. Yeah. 
And so some people have that more naturally than others. Yeah. But even if you don't have it naturally, you can train yourself into it. Yeah. Yeah. Good. And you can train yourself remotely into it. <laughs> yeah. Well, I'll get I'll get back to that in a question in a, in a second actually because I, I do at some point um, want to ask you about you know what what would you tell our students about building some of those skills right but. But um, given that I've also uh, put a bit of an emphasis in, in my session uh, this week on, you know, basically what do women leaders need to think about um, women who want to become global leaders and, and contribute to, you know, global business in a way, yeah. are there specific um, additional things that they need to think about in terms of how they function? Maybe they're actually better functioning in some of those areas than some of their male counterparts. They just yeah. don't know it yet. So what, what would you That's really interesting. Women yeah, I, I like that last part of your question there. And that is really interesting. I think it depends on there's it, there's so much dependency on the organization that they work for and work with and who, who else they are actually, you know, who's in their microcosm. Yeah. Um unfortunately. <laughs> We're still not having enough women leaders, and that's definitely an issue in Australia. So when I arrived in Australia, and I looked at the research, it's, I'm not the only one who has that perception. There are just not that many women leaders here. Um, it is good that we talk a lot about those who are here and who are successful, because um, when you're a woman and you're you're taking that path and you're finding your career and um, you know, going step by step, what you have to look at is the role models. That is just absolutely crucial. Um, always look upwards, always look at who motivates you, who inspires you. There's just so much in it for in, in terms of inspiration. And again, that's something that um, is a, a real characteristic of, of a leader that you're, I think it's a mix of in inspiring, you know, bringing people along with you. And at the same time, also being hands on. So you have an issue, I can bring the solution. Yeah. And women are, can be really good at that. Yeah. Not saying all women, <laughs> no, I'm not saying all men, <laughs> but, um, yeah, looking at the role models also choosing, choosing your battles is really important mm -hmm. of and in particular when well depending on which culture you're coming from i i just i can't believe that you know we're still here at these times where women think they need to make a choice between for example having a family life and a leadership career mm -hmm. no you don't need to make a choice do yeah. it and yeah. you can do all of it. And then within that, just like anybody, you will make choices about what you will and take on and what you will not take on. Yeah. And that's fine. That's okay. <laughs> it's your path, but you can be an outstanding leader and the door behind you during your Webex opens and your kid comes in and the daddy comes and picks it up and takes it into another part of the apartment. That's fine. <laughs> That yeah. works too. <laughs> yeah, that's right. So yeah, just, you know, believe in yourself and look at the role models. You don't need to, you know, hold back at all. Yeah. No, I like Connect your point. Yeah. yeah. Sorry. Con I'm just thinking, oh, here's another one as well that um, um, was, was enthusiastically um, discussed in one of the women's group, groups that I was leading just recently. And that was have a very, be, be noisy, mm -hmm. shout, just, you know, you're there, um, people need to listen to you. Don't yeah. let anybody talk over you or take that role that you want or, you know, be held back by anything like that, connect and be really, really noisy doing it. Yeah. <laughs> no, and I really like the point that you made, um, you know, basically leadership is a lot about problem solving and it's about problem solving for other people, right? So, mm -hmm. and to some yeah. degree, yes, I think a lot of women have a natural knack for very, being very pragmatic and just getting stuff done, you know, mm -hmm. without raising too many issues about things, just getting it done. 
And then yeah. the other component is that relational component that women are often yeah. quite good at figuring out solutions to problems without uh, burning bridges, without, you know, mm -hmm. offending people along the way. So they're very good at keeping the relationships yeah. going while still solving the issue, right? And so that's unfortunately not often uh, valued enough by organizations because they mostly see the fighters, you know, the ones that raise issues all the time. Yeah. Um, yeah. Whereas women get the work done quietly in the background. Yeah, and, yeah. So absolutely. I appreciate what you say about, you know, be noisy. Well, at least, you know, point out when you've done something well and when, Correct. you know, point it, make yeah. other people know yeah. that you have solved a problem for them. Oh, that you, it's your idea. That's right. That is, yeah. that is the one that is chosen. It's not anybody else's. It's you yeah. were the first one to actually, and have other women confirm. Oh, that's right. <laughs> yeah. That that was your that's idea. Right. Yeah, good. <laughs> All right, so let's go to that question. What what do people do? So if, if they uh -huh. have, you know, global leadership in on the horizon for themselves where they say, oh, I think I could become a global leader one day or, you know, be interested in it. What are the kinds of skills they can start building now? What's the path that they should start on? And then they, of course, need to make their own choices. But what would you say? Yeah. yeah. Well, skills, I think we've, we, you know, we, we already talked about some of those skills. So the, you know, inspirational skills, you can, can, can the communication skills, um, the hands-on problem solver type of engagement with people. I always think that it's actually, it takes you longer, but it's more sustainable as a skill that you have people engagement than anything else. Technical skills, you can learn on the go. Yeah. You know, you look at a job advertisement or there's an offer to become a leader in an organization. You will say yes, because it's your leadership skills that count. It's not the technical, this and that. You can still learn that and you can learn that really quickly. Uh, but it's really that people engagement piece. and and. That's a mix of how you build that up. It's again, this mix of formal training, mm -hmm. which of course can come from universities, but can come up from other sources as well. And then it's the experience. So seeking out experiences is a really good thing to do. You want to be a leader where, you know, you're not having the opportunities within, you know, uh, organization company XYZ that you're dreaming of. Well, I become the leader of a sports club, become the leader of a, where at the moment probably it would be a remote uh, webinar about this and that. You know, just pull people together, lead something, and you will just keep having more and more of that experience. Yeah, that's, that's a really nice thing to do. Um, what I've seen in the past couple of years in particular is really interesting as well, which is um, you learn so much from peers and through mentorship and through coaching as well, but mentoring problems. And obviously the Faculty of Business and Economics at Melbourne University has a great um, mentor program. So signing up for that is just a really good idea. Um, talking to leaders, you know, and, and picking their brain about how would you do it this way or that way, et cetera. Those kinds of things are really important. And then when, when, when you're in the organization, when you're actually in your working life, looking for support mechanisms that can be people who have a similar role to yours, but who are maybe in a different country or a different portfolio or what have you. Having, the, having those conversations is really, really valuable. So it's an entire you know, program that you can constitute yourself, whether you formalize that or it just comes organically. Yeah, that, right. that, that's what I would recommend. Great, thank you. So I think we got pretty much a wealth of knowledge from you uh, on <laughs> what global leaders need to do and be like and how our students may be thinking about getting there. So thank you very much, Gabriela. I very much appreciate it. Thank you.